one were here at the wallaby enclosure at Wildwood and they might be a little bit tricky to spot because they're definitely hiding in the long grass but we've got our female wallabies in this enclosure. So Wildwood is a native species wildlife park uh, which means that we do British species only but of course a wallaby is not from the UK. So wallabies were introduced to the UK in the 1950s and 60s from Australia. And this kind that we have here is the red-necked wallaby and they were introduced from Tasmania. And the reason they were brought over to the UK is because people thought they might make a very good pet. Wallabies look a lot like kangaroos. That's because they are related to kangaroos. Kangaroos are just sort of the larger uh, members of this family and the wallabies are sort of the smaller members and even smaller than that you've got the quokkas. So wallabies like kangaroos are marsupials. They have a pouch on their belly and they will hop around on their hind legs um, to get around. So you might be able to notice our females sitting up. Males are taller than females and at their absolute tallest height they only reach about a meter. So the females are a little bit smaller than that. They're all under a meter in height. So wallabies were introduced in the 50s and 60s and um, they were brought over as pets but just like kangaroos they can jump and they can jump really really high. In fact they can actually jump up to two meters high according to some records and yes this fence beside me isn't quite two meters high it's certainly high enough to keep these female wallabies inside um, so what they did when people put them in their gardens as a very exotic pet is they escaped now wallabies are herbivores so they like to eat plants and just plants and they'll eat almost anything unsurprisingly they don't like nettles but they definitely like to eat brambles um, they'll eat fresh grass they'll eat leaves um, they really 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 like leaves off of trees when we give them branches or browse so they'll eat almost any kind of greenery so when they escaped into the British countryside they were basically surrounded by a buffet because they were introduced in the 50s and 60s, there were already no more large predators remaining in the country. In fact, the largest predator uh, it, since the 1950s until present day is a red fox. So wallabies didn't really have any animals that could prey upon them, so they didn't really have to worry about being hunted for somebody's dinner. Even the wallaby babies or joeys are safely tucked inside mum's pouch until they're old enough to run alongside her. So when they escaped from people's gardens, they were surrounded by food and they had no predators. Now you might think rainy old Britain isn't really the kind of an environment they're used to in Australia, but for those of you who have been down to Tasmania, you'll know that actually the climate in Tasmania is really similar to here. So they were also perfectly adapted for living in this environment. When you put those factors together, it won't come as a surprise then that they actually became really used to living in this country. And not only did they survive, but they thrived. And so wallabies are an example of an introduced species and they're actually found in the wild all over the country today. Now, this location of Wildwood is down in Kent and I've had visitors tell me that they've found wallabies really nearby, even in Chartham Hatch, but there are reports of wallabies all over the country and in Ireland as well. So as far as we know, wallabies have actually been doing really well for themselves and they've spread around the country. Now wallabies being related to kangaroos have a really similar body shape. They have two great big strong hind legs and a big old tail. Their tail helps them a bit with balance, but it does mean they can't hop backwards. When they're hopping forwards, they can go at a top speed of about 35 miles an hour, but their sort of regular running speed or hopping speed as it were is about 20 miles an hour. So they're pretty quick and likely to outrun any predators. In fact, the only real risk to wallabies in Britain these days is accidentally getting hit by a car um, by someone who obviously isn't expecting a wallaby to be in the middle of the road. But perhaps one of the other reasons they're so successful has to do with how wallabies reproduce. 
So wallabies are marsupials. That means that unlike a lot of mammals, they're not developing inside their mother's uterus, but they're developing or doing most of their development after they've been born. And they do that in their mum's pouch. So marsupial animals have a pouch. Not all of them have a pouch, just the females of each species have a pouch. So these ladies behind me, the mums do all have pouches on their tummies. And when a wallaby is born, well, first of all, mum isn't pregnant for very long. She's pregnant for about a month, 30 days. So that's a nice, quick and easy pregnancy. And when the wallaby baby or joey is born, the joey is really small, about the size of a broad bean. So I'm just going to grab a pebble. There we go. So when the joey is born, it's only about this big. And I'm sorry to say, but it doesn't look very nice. It's hairless, uh, its eyes are closed, it's quite naked and honestly a bit ugly. When the wallaby is born though, it isn't born into mum's pouch. So its very first job on its very first day on this planet Earth is to climb into mum's pouch and mum doesn't help it out. That's the test of whether a wallaby joey is viable. Can it make it into mum's pouch? So it uses its front claws a little bit like grappling hooks and it climbs up Mount Mum, up her tummy into her pouch because it needs to be in there to be safe and warm and also because that's where the nipples are. That's where its source of food is going to be. So a wallaby is going to be climbing up mum's tummy. She might groom a little trail in her fur, but that's about all she does. And it might take up to two weeks, although usually it happens a lot quicker, and hopefully the weather's good enough that the wallaby makes it. So then once that tiny little joey has made it into mum's pouch, it latches onto a nipple and it drinks milk. And it drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks. And it doesn't let go for about four months. In the meantime, it's busy growing and developing. So by the time it's four months old, it's getting old enough to sometimes stick its head outside of the pouch and have a look around. And it might sometimes stick a leg outside the pouch or it might stick a hind leg outside the pouch. And it's getting bigger and bigger as it's busy drinking milk. Once it's about five or six months old, the wallaby is old enough to start venturing outside mum's pouch once in a while, although very quickly it goes back in. And when it's about nine months old, it's finally so big that it's mum's pouch is now dragging on the ground and if the wallaby doesn't decide to leave on his own, mum's going to kick him out. But just like a teenager, he still needs mum around. So what he does is he's going to continue to stick his head inside her pouch and still drink milk because wallaby joeys don't wean until they're actually one year old. So that's a lot of parenting for mum. But it gets even more interesting because when she was pregnant, she was pregnant with twins. So only one joey was born. She only has room inside her pouch for one joey at a time. However, she was pregnant with twins, so the other fertilized embryo, the other joey, that pregnancy kind of went on hold. It's called delayed implantation, and what it means is that um, the pregnancy isn't terminated, but it doesn't carry on until the conditions are favorable. And in this case, favorable conditions means that her pouch is now vacated. So when Joey number one, as we're going to call him, is about nine months old, that second pregnancy takes and continues, and about a month later, she's got Joey number two that's born. So if you're keeping track, our very busy wallaby mum now has two Joeys. Joey number one, although he's kind of a teenager, he's still not fully grown. He's not fully weaned, although he's starting to eat some plants. And so he's still sticking his head into his mum's pouch and drinking from that very same nipple that he latched onto all those months ago. Meanwhile, Joey number two has hopefully successfully climbed into her pouch and is drinking from his or her very own nipple as well. So mom actually has two nipples that are making two different kinds of milk for two Joeys of very different ages with very different nutritional needs. Talk about multitasking, right? And then as if she wasn't busy enough, she can actually get pregnant all over again, even while she's still busy nursing her current set of joeys. So she can get pregnant and because of delayed implantation, those embryos won't implant, that pregnancy won't take until she's got room in her pouch all over again. 
So bearing this in mind and also keeping in mind that in captivity wallabies can live into their late teens until they're about 17 or 18 years old, it comes as no surprise then that a very small founding population, very few wallabies that were brought over as pets and escaped from people's gardens, have actually managed to essentially colonize the country. Call it an Australian invasion if you will. 